everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. Hit the like button and comment below. Before further ado, I bring to you Mr. Jeff Pilsen. I know Jeff from Dawkins, but you know him from everybody from Foreigner to all those hmm. different yoga classes he's taught you. How are you doing, Jeff? <laughs> I am doing great. I uh, I just spoke with a friend of yours who said to say hi. Uh, Rudy Sarzo says hi. Ah, oh, great! Yeah, Rudy, yeah. what a great guy! What an yeah, amazing is. guy! Uh, I guess he's just going on the road uh, with Claire Wright so, soon. So we're here to talk about Revolution Saints. Um, how many years? Uh, I think this is the fourth album that's been released, or the third. I thought it was the fifth. I think I think there was three with uh, with uh, Doug and Jack before. Couldn't swear to that. I know there's at least two. Um, but uh, from my understanding, this is the fifth record. Okay. I just saw the uh, video for uh, um, Fall on Your Knees. What a great – I love the cinematography in the video, by the way, but it's a great tune yeah. as well. Um, so, everybody, before we forget, the links are down below to go and purchase the album and the merch. Um, so that album is out now, and I was just talking to Jeff if there's any plans for touring because it is a great album. Um, the other the other Revolution Saints, I've heard some pieces here and there. So it's a kind of an 80s kind of a, I don't know, I was listening to that song. I was thinking kind of a Styx, Night Ranger, kind of a genre with, you know, your um, input into it. How do you describe that uh, sound to people that are Pilsen fans, but not necessarily have heard of Revolution Saints? Okay, well, I, I mean, it's it's very melodic, hard rock. It's heavy, but it's very, you know, a lot of emphasis on melody in the songs. Um, and, you know, I'm actually not afraid to call it like a heavy journey, <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. Because, um, I mean, you can't you can't uh, deny that that there's something in Dean's voice that reminds you of Steve Perry. It's like as if Steve Perry were singing in a, a heavier, more, you know, dug in rock and roll band, um, which I think is really great. I'm really I, I love that. I mean, I mean, Dean has his own voice, but, you know, it, it is there is a Steve Perry quality to it. Um so I, I I'm not afraid I'm not ashamed to say that because I think I think the world needs a heavy journey. Journey's great, um, but why not get a heavier version? You know, something that really really kicks kicks some butt. Um, so that's how I describe it: M very melodic, heavy rock with uh, just amazing, uh, an amazing, unique singer. And you've you've recently brought in, I mean. Um... Joel Holkstra, he's being, uh, I don't know if he's going to have any limbs left. He's pulled this way, he's pulled that way. He's, he's in Accept now. Yes, yes, that's right. So um, what? who who decided or how did that come about bringing Joel into the band? Well, I, I don't know all the details, but I will say I'm pretty sure it was Serafino from uh, Frontiers, a record label. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's who asked me to be in the band, so I'm, I'm assuming that would be who would have asked Joel. Um Joel is just great. I mean, there's a reason why he's being pulled in, in every d direction. He is, he's as good as you get on guitar. He's a great guy. He's a great writer. Um, he's just a phenomenal musician. So any band would want him. And um, I've worked with Joel before, and I think the world of him, I just, I, like I say, I don't think you get any better than that. <laughs> yeah, and um, he's, he's definitely one of those humble people, too, because – um, in your circles of um, your career, you, you have to be able to know the line for somebody's personality meeting their musician musicianship, right? Well, of course. I mean, that's how, that's what chemistry, that's a big part of chemistry. And chemistry is really important in putting bands together. And, you know, Serafino has been good about that. I, you know, I, and it, you, you got to say that's impressive coming from a, a guy who's on the business end because, the personalities are on our end, on the artist end, and um, and it just it really really flows. Um, for one thing, you know, Dean is such a wonderful guy, and and the band is is you know the the focus of the band would be Dean's voice and providing a vehicle that really represents his voice well, and then you know behind that comes this great kick ass rock band, um, and and Joel fits into that perfectly because he's such a great musician and he's also a great guy. So yeah, it's. It's the combination of the factors that make a good chemistry in a band. And, and um, you know, like I say, the chemistry in this band is pretty undeniable. Right on. Um, and you're like a busy, busy beaver. Um, I see you're going on tour again uh, with uh, Foreigner in March. 
How many uh, shows are in that run before you guys hook up with Sticks and John Waite? Oh, I couldn't tell you the exact amount of shows, but I know we're we're going nonstop. I I mean, my first show back. Uh, well, we just did an acoustic show over the weekend, but um, but uh, uh, starting March first, we're going hard and you know hard and heavy all the way until the Sticks John Waite tour starts in June. So. Couldn't tell you the amount of shows, but it's uh, there's not a lot of days off. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, for, they probably say um, make sure your passport's valid until. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I think I saw some Canadian dates in there. Is that correct? Yeah, I was going to say we are going to Canada in May. So, yes, the passport. We were just in Canada over the weekend, too. We played a show, a private show in Montreal. But, um, but yeah, uh, Canadian dates in May, which I'm very excited about. We love playing Canada. Canada is such a great audience for Foreigner. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I say, pretty full schedule until the June tour. Then, then we're, we're, we're going after the June tour, we're, we're going all the way till, till Thanksgiving here in the U S. So, um, long like, year. What, keep, year. what year. keeps you going and motivated, Jeff? Like, do you have like really extreme high alimony payments or <laughs> no, actually I have no alimony payments. I was yeah. Divorced, but um, kind of managed to come through that without any alimony payments. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm motivated by music. I mean, yeah. I just I love I love the bands I'm in. I love the people I work with. I love music itself. I love making music. This room, my studio, um, is you know rooms I should say, uh, is is my my happy place. So I just love to make music, and I'm I'm very fortunate. I get to make a lot of music with. Really incredible musicians, and you know what's better than that? Yeah, because a lo lot of um, the people I talk to, like yourself and Rudy and stuff, you know, we know they're we know you got to be foolish to think they're doing it for the money because you're not because you're so established, especially in your country with the royalties and stuff. I ask you an odd question, odd, 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 because this is a Canadian and we don't know how to market. I was telling somebody the other day, an American will step over, no, will pick up. What's the freaking American saying? American will spend a dollar to make a dollar. A Canadian will step over a dollar to pick up a quarter. Like we don't know how to market. <laughs> I, I I understand the uh, yeah the reference. Um, although you know Americans can do the same thing too. It's not it's not just Canadians. Um, and you're right. It's not about the money for me. Not not all the extra projects at, at all. Um, I you know, yes, I like to be paid like anybody, of course. But um, but really. I mean, these projects are all about, it's kind of bucket list kind of things. You know, I get to work with, you know, Joel Holkstra. I get to work with Dean. I get to work with George Lynch. I get to work with Red Beach. I get to work with Robin McCauley. Blah, 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 the list goes on. Mm -hmm. um, and and I love making, you know, the, there's no feeling in the world. There's no better high than when you're collaborating and all of a sudden something happens where the product, the 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 uh, sum of the product is greater than the individual parts. And that's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. That's magic. Uh, same, same that happens with a great live show. You just, there's no feeling like it. So uh, yeah, it's not about the money. It's about, it's about this great opportunity that we have to, to make great music and, and enjoy making great music. Yeah. And Frontiers has been just, I, I can't believe how much they've grown. Um, I've found out about Frontiers, I think it was about three or four years ago. I don't know how long they've been out, but I mean, they're bringing out just so many different um, albums. Like so many people are represented by Frontiers, what I'm trying to say. And it, I think it's an Italian company. It is an Italian label. And I, I think they've been around like over 20 years but oh is that right okay yeah but but they've they are really coming i mean they're really becoming a worldwide uh institution that's you know i mean with an amazing roster a lot of bands um and yeah they're the home for a lot of us classic rock artists who who um you know because they're supportive of it they they really believe in that music and they want to do their best to promote it and that's a that's a great thing you know not 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 that hasn't always been there so it's a great thing yeah, it's um, yeah, no, it's just amazing. So my question was, and this is kind of a funny financial one, but it's just I'm asking as a general joke. Do you guys still get royalties from like the docking days? Just oh, a question. Sure. You still get them? Sure. You buy me a coffee? Uh, <laughs> I could buy you a coffee for my royalties. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just bugging Jeff. I'm just saying. Hey, anybody wants to buy a coffee? There's a link below. But no, I was actually uh, 
thinking about that for for a long time i thought is this appropriate to ask and i thought well my interviews are kind of screwy and nutty anyway so but so yeah you're still getting like a loan again and all that stuff money's still rolling in wow yeah i mean you know i'm not millions but <laughs> but yeah i mean it, i still get yeah income from that absolutely you ever think of maybe doing what um i don't know who's doing it but i think it was neil young you 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 sell your catalog to somebody or you're like well i mean yeah and i've i've been approached um i have no desire to do that to be honest with you at least not now maybe someday who knows um but you know i'm not ready to retire yet uh and um i i like having that publishing income it's very nice um Mm -hmm. so i have no intention of selling it um i you know i'm not going to get neil young kind of money anyways but uh uh, but yeah, there's been there's been uh, offers before for buying publishing, and I I just I'm not interested in selling right now. Right on. I mean, we're we're still young. You're still long young. We got a lot of years to spend our money and stuff, and buy coffees and receive coffees. What kind of coffee do you drink? My favorite is French roast. Okay. Um, my very favorite is when I get whole bean French roast that they used to sell at Costco. And it was oh. a it was great two pound bag of whole bean French roast Starbucks coffee that was better than the Starbucks that you get when you buy beans from a Starbucks. For some reason, Costco got these just great stuff. They've stopped selling it. So um, so now I buy the Costco. They do have a French roast. It's not quite as good as the Starbucks was, but it's still very good. And uh, cheers. Yeah, right. On. Oh, were you on the Today Show? Oh yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, Only one cup, but, uh, but we here, played. Here's my cheers. Um, can you see that? I, I can't see what it says, and it's backwards. But <laughs> yeah, it says two greyhounds. It's a hockey club here where I live. Um, oh yeah, I wouldn't probably know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, really, I, I, I saw that Today Show emblem pretty quick, and I recognize that for sure. So I will keep you much longer, Jeff. You've been a pleasure. I'm going to put all the links down below for everybody to to um, go to the Revolution Saints and um, get the album. If you, do you guys have merch? Uh, there's merch available at the Frontiers website. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, for, for that and, and all the projects I'm involved with, End Machine, Black Swan, all of them, there's there's merch there, yes. I'll even put the Foreigner uh, links down below. So um, the one or two shows out of the 30 coming up that haven't sold out yet, we can yeah, sell yeah, them out. Right. I, yeah, I mean, I don't. I know that the Canadian tour is doing quite well on pre-sales, but I think there might be still tickets left. So I hope people do go because it's, well, you know, it's it's part of our farewell tour. This is the last year that Foreigner is going to do a long nine months of the year tour. Uh, so um, I'm, you know, I I hope we would come back to Canada at some point, but you never know. So this would be a great time to come and see it. Speaking of that, I got to call you guys out in a funny way. Um, we, we hear that. And I, th- I think Kiss and Gene Simmons started it 117 years ago was their last tour. And then the year after that, it was the very, very final tour. And what are we at now? Um, um, the final tour point 2.0. So are, are you honest that you guys are thinking this is, might be the last long run? Well, I mean, we are very honest and serious about saying that this is the end of the nine months of the year on the road kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, I can't promise you anything, but, um, but I know Kelly would like to retire and, uh, we've talked about 2025, uh, we're probably going to do some shows, but they're going to, they're going to be very select. It's not going to be a long tour. Um, so we'll see, but, uh, definitely as, especially as far as Kelly's concerned, this is the end of long, a long year on the road. Wow, that's it's gonna be sad, but I'm gonna make sure to catch you guys up here in Canada. Um, opposite of unsubscribe, Jeff. I'm sorry. The op. What's the opposite of subscribe? Unsubscribe. <laughs> Do as Jeff Pilson says and subscribe to the channel. Um, oh, and uh, thanks again for your time, my friend. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Talk soon. Okay. Bye, Jeff. Thank-